Hi guys! Welcome back to another sewing tutorial video. Today we'll be learning how to sew zipper flies for pants. We'll be learning how to sew zipper flies with or without a waistband. Flies can be pretty complicated the first time you sew, so this is a great tutorial for beginners. Learning to sew zipper flies is an essential sewing technique for pants. It creates a classic and smooth look for your pants and makes getting in and out of them really easy. I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step process on how to transfer the markings, install the zipper, and how to make the facing or waistband. I hope you'll give this technique a try, and let's get started. Today I'll be sewing a zipper fly into McCool's 7726. These pants are high-waisted and have extra fabric at the top to fold over to make facing. The zipper that I'm using on these pants is a 23cm nylon zipper. Unlike with dress zippers, you'll need to use an accurate size zipper for the pants. It can be a bit longer, but definitely not shorter than the pattern requires. Double check what your pattern recommends before you buy. For these pants, I'm sewing the zipper in before I do the main construction of the pants. Check your pan instructions for when you need to sew in the zipper. On your pattern, you should have a diagram which looks like this. The curved line on the left is the stitching line where we need to top stitch over the fly. The centre line marks the centre front of the pants and where the opening flap will be. The line on the right is where the zipper is sewn into the right hand pants piece. The horizontal line represents the top edge and waistline of the pants. Here's how to transfer the markings with the tailor's chalk. Grab the right pants piece. Place the right side facing up. For this leg, we only need to mark the rightmost marking. Pin the pattern to the fabric next to this marking. Fold the pattern on top of the marking. Transfer this line onto the fabric. Go ahead and grab the left pant leg. On the right side of this pants, I'm going to mark the stitching line for the fly. Pin next to the fly and transfer this line. The curved area is up to you how you want it to look, but you need to keep the length the same. You can also try and copy the pattern. Flip over to the wrong side of the fabric. Mark the centre front onto the wrong side of this pants piece. At this point, I like to finish the raw edges of the fly because they become hard to sew later. Let's start sewing the fly. The first thing I'm going to do is take the left front piece over to the ironing board. I'm going to fold along the facing line on the wrong side of the fabric. Press this piece. Take this piece over to the sewing machine. Change your stitch length to the maximum on the straight stitch. Sew on top of the raw edge of your facing at about 1.5cm. This is a temporary stitch which will hold the facing in place while we sew in the zipper. We're only doing this to the left pant leg, as this is the side where the fly is sewn in. It will make the top stitching easier later if we can see the top edge. Bring the two front pieces of the pants together and pin. This time we're going to sew on top of the line marked for the centre front. Use a matching thread colour for this next seam. We need to start sewing about 5cm under the fly at the crotch seam. Use a seam allowance of about 1.5cm. Sew up until you reach the circle marking. Backstitch backwards and forwards at this marking to reinforce it. This area is just below the fly. It will become difficult to sew later so we need to make a seam before we put the zipper in. Then change your stitch length to the maximum on the straight stitch. Keep sewing on top of the line that you made for the centre front until you reach the top of the fly. Fly. 
Take the pants up to the ironing board. Grab the right pant leg, the one that hasn't been folded along at the top. Fold along the fold line that we drew on the pattern with tailor's chalk. Fold towards the wrong side. Press with your iron. Place the pants flat. Grab the right side of the pant leg. Pull back the other piece to expose the fold line that you made on the right pant leg. We need to position the zipper onto the fold line that you previously ironed. The right side of the zipper needs to be sewn underneath the fold. Place the bottom stopper at the end of the line that you transferred. Place the fold line just a few millimeters from the teeth of the zipper. Pin into place. Unfold the pants and check where the stopper is on the right side. You should just be able to feel it with your fingers. I place the stopper just above the outside fly seam. This is best to make sure that you don't run it over later when you top stitch. At your sewing machine, change your foot to a zipper foot mounted on the left side. Use the center straight stitch. Turn the wheel to make sure that your needle is safely passing through the opening. Unzip the zipper for about 5 cm. Bring the zipper up to the foot. Position your foot so that you're sewing directly on top of the fold for the pants. Place the teeth of the zipper underneath the left side of the foot. Sew from the top down to the zipper head. Push the needle into the fabric. Lift the foot and zip up the zipper. Place the foot back down on the fabric and continue sewing to the stopper. Unfold the pants so that they will be flat. Place the zipper down on the left pants leg. Pin into place. For the top of the zipper, we need to fold under the excess zipper tape. Pin into place. Change your stitch length to the maximum on the straight stitch. Change your thread to a contrasting color. To make the zipper as flat as possible, we need to temporarily sew it to the left pant piece. The long stitch length and contrasting color will make this seam easy to remove later. Change your stitch settings back to the normal straight stitch with a matching thread color. Mount the zipper foot on the left side of the zipper this time. On the right side of the pants we can now make the final fly seam. For this seam we need to follow the stitching line on the left pant piece. The zipper is already basted so it can't move as we sew. When you reach near the end of the zipper, you need to be careful not to sew over the bottom stopper, as you'll probably break your needle. Try to feel where the stopper is and refer to the end of the basting thread. To make a smooth curve at the bottom of the fly, I suggest making a few stitches, then pushing the needle into the fabric. Lift the foot and adjust the angle to keep to the curve. Keep doing this until you reach the end of the curve. We need to remove the basting thread. Grab a quick unpick. Carefully remove the basting seam on the left side of the fly. Carefully rip down the basting thread at the center front of the fly. Do not rip past the bottom curved stitching.
You can now go ahead and sew the rest of the pants. When you're ready, you need to sew the facing of the right pant piece over the top of the zipper. With your iron, press the facing side of the pants to the wrong side. Make sure that the excess zipper tape is folded away from view. The fold of the facing needs to be placed on top of the zipper and as close to the zipper seam as possible. Pin the facing into place. Grab a needle and thread it with a double strand of thread. I'll be using a lattice stitch to hand sew the facing into place. Here's how to make this. Take your needle and push it into the wrong side of the facing so it comes out through the fold. Push the needle into the zipper tape just next to the base of the thread. Make a stitch length of about half a centimeter. This stitch is slightly to the left of the zipper seam. Check on the right side of the zipper that you can't see the needle. Then pull through. The next stitch is made into the fold of the facing. Push the needle into the fabric next to the end of your last stitch. Make a stitch length of about 5 millimeters. Pull the needle through. Keep sewing the facing to the zipper until you reach the end of the fabric. Here's how to knot off. Make a small stitch at the end of the fabric and pull down to the loop. Pass the needle through the loop three times. When you pull the needle, a knot will form at the base of the thread. Repeat this once, then cut off. Depending on the type of pants you're sewing, you'll also need to sew a fastening at the top of the fly. I'll be hand sewing a hook and bar, which is really easy to sew and works great for this type of fly. Alternatively, you can also use snaps. Thread a needle with a double strand and knot. The hook needs to be placed at the top of the fly at the corner. Unzip the pants and lay out the left side of the zipper on the wrong side. Place the hook on the top corner. Make sure that it won't be visible from the right side. Hold the hook in place with one hand. With the other hand, insert the needle up through one of the holes. The needle should be facing from the outside towards in. Before you pull the needle through, make sure that it isn't showing on the right side of the pants. Then pull through. Make the same stitch through the hole again and you'll have a loop. Repeat this stitch until you build up a strong amount of thread on the hole. Now we'll knot off. Sew all of the other holes on the hook just the same. The bar needs to be placed vertically on top of the other side of the zipper so that it will lie flat. Now that the hook is done, we can figure out where to place the bar. I'm going to place the hook piece on the left side of the zipper opening. Zip up the fly and place the bar on the hook. Hold these two pieces together and try to place the bar piece down on the pants. Now try and make a marking vertically where it needs to be sewn. Use the same method to sew the bar onto the pants. And that's it! The pants fly is all done and looks super neat. The stitching is beautiful inside and out and makes a great addition to these pants. So here's another great example of a fly in pants. This is McCool 7982 in View B. It has a classic waistband and button combination. The process is exactly the same, but this time we have a waistband. So sew the waistband on.
The last thing we need to do is to sew the button and buttonhole. If you're working from a pattern then you can copy the position of the button and buttonhole from there. On the left side of the pants we'll be sewing the buttonhole. Measure the height of the waistband and make a few markings at exactly halfway. Draw a line to connect these markings for about an inch. Draw another line at 1.5 cm from the end of the waistband. The intersection of these two lines is where the end of the buttonhole will be sewn. Bring the pants up to the sewing machine. It's best to check your sewing manual on how to sew a buttonhole for your machine and practice with a scrap piece of fabric. Grab your buttonhole foot and insert your button into it. Pull down the buttonhole lever. Change your stitch settings to the chosen buttonhole and lower the stitch length. Insert the pants into the machine so that the marking that you made lines up with the lines on the buttonhole foot. The buttonhole foot should be straight in the middle of the waistband. Sew the buttonhole. Place a pin at the end of the buttonhole. This will prevent you from ripping the buttonhole too far. Use a quick unpick to rip a hole through the middle of the buttonhole up to the pin. Zip up the fly. Place the buttonhole over the other side of the waistband and pin so that it looks neat. Remove the pin so that you can fold back half of the waistband. The button needs to be placed at the right edge of the buttonhole. I'm going to make a marking at the bottom layer where the button needs to be sewn. Thread your needle again and not the end. I'm going to insert the needle into the wrong side of the waistband and out through the cross marking, slightly to the right. I'm going to thread the needle through the wrong side of the button and out through the other. Next I'm going to push the needle through the right side of the fabric at the marking. Pull the thread down to a loop. You want to pull up the button so that it just hovers about 5mm off the fabric. Repeat the same process until you build up a good amount of thread on the button. Next we'll make a shank, which ties the threads together and supports the button. Move the needle around the button. Pass the needle through the loop. Repeat this process at least five times. Push the needle through the wrong side of the fabric and not off. Now we're all done! The fly and the waistband look so neat and well done. These pants are so easy to get in and out of and this makes an elegant solution. Thanks for joining me in another sewing technique tutorial video. Today we learn how to sew zipper flies for pants with a waistband or with facing. I hope this video gives you a little more confidence next time you decide to take up a pants project. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching!